So another F1 race, this time in Saudi Arabia at the Jeddah circuit. So I'm back giving another new fan reaction. I got my freaking 2024 sweatshirt on. I guess this is just going to be the all the races that Max wins this year. A ninth consecutive win. Max Verstappen, eat, sleep, win, repeat. Verstappen takes the Saudi Arabian Grand Prix. I mean, it is incredible like I've never seen it in any other sport this type of dominance race after race so yeah one of the most exciting parts for me was basically the first couple turns in the first lap where you know Charles started second and then Checo kind of got the better of him on like the maybe the first couple turns and then Charles got him back got around him and uh, held on to second for about one lap and then Checo made a pass so then it was Red Bull show up until Stroll ran into the wall and then there was a safety car, which they had a funny exchange. Hit the wall. Okay, can you bring it back, Lance? No, oh, I'm in the wall. No, copy that. But then at this point, almost all of the drivers pitted. When they pit, Checo had a little bit of an unsafe exit with Alonso. As it is incredibly frantic stuff down there in the pit lane. Oh, I need a crash with a Red Bull. So close. And at first, like, nothing really came of it. And I was, me being new, I was sitting there like, what the heck, they had to help hold Charles up. And then Checo gets that, like, aggressive exit. But I guess, you know, it's racing. And then he got penalized for it. But um, at that point, both uh, Lando and Hamilton didn't pit. So they were kind of occupying, I guess, first and third. I think Hamilton was in third maybe for a bit up until, you know, he got passed, and then eventually Max got past Lando, and then that was the race. One of the interesting things that was, like, kind of the talk of the race was Lando didn't get a penalty for, I guess, like, the start of the race. He kind of, like, jumped the line a little bit. They said he didn't really move out of his box. I gotta look at it closer. Maybe we pull up the replay here. But, yeah, I wonder, like, who's deciding the penalties, you know? Because, like, even Magnussen got two 10-second penalties, and one of them I don't even think was a penalty like 10 second time penalty for leaving the track and gaining an advantage oh you are kidding me aren't you 10 that's, seconds for that that's harsh I, I don't know you know and so it's interesting to see like what are the rules behind it you know it's kind of like the fia just does what they want and at least in this race it almost felt like they were trying to help all the other teams pass red bull but it didn't work but even with those penalties, Magnussen raced a hell of a race because he basically, from what I saw, held up half of the grid for almost half of the race so that Nico could get 10th and they could get in the points, which uh, was great for Haas. And then as I guess people know, uh, Carlos Sainz was out with appendicitis. He had surgery yesterday on the day of qualifying, I think. So he was at the race today, but he couldn't race. So Ali Behrman, 18-year-old British driver from F2, had his debut in a Ferrari with only one hour of practice and then the quali. Yeah, what a race, dude. He missed out on Q3 by 0 0.03 seconds. I guess, what do they call that? A hundredth of a sec? Three hundredths of a second? And then started 11th and finished 7th ahead of both Lando and Hamilton. I can't imagine what that must be like for the family to see like first race ever with barely any prep in the pressure of being in a Ferrari, and then you're holding off Lewis Hamilton and Lando Norris for seventh place in your first race. I mean, that's just incredible. So he was driver of the day, which is so deserved, and hopefully some teams pick him up. I think people talk a lot about, like, the F1 grid kind of needs some, some more younger drivers in there, so I guess we'll see what happens with that. It was interesting to see, too, the decision for Hamilton and Norris not to pit during the safety car. I kind of liked the gamble because the safety car happened so quick. There was a good chance that another one could pop up, and then that would be really advantageous for them later in the race and so I like gambles like that because it almost seemed like they didn't really have anything to lose I mean maybe Lando had more to lose than Hamilton because Lando's been qualifying better lately but yeah that was interesting and I guess the reason that the commentators mentioned was that everybody pit during that uh safety car is it pitted or pit whatever everybody pitted during the safety car. So it would have been a mess. He would have been held up, would have lost places anyway. So yeah, I like the gamble. It didn't really work out. Hamilton finished ninth, uh, Lando eighth, Behrman seventh. And then some follow-up from last week's uh, Yuki and uh, Ricardo drama. It seems like Yuki is racing better than Ricardo. And I, I really like Danny Rick. 
but uh, you know he had a spin out late in the race and he was already falling behind pretty far. But Yuki didn't have that great of a race either. He qualified kind of high and then lost a bunch of places and kept going backwards. And so it was a really rough race for for uh, the RB team. And so the next race is in Australia in a couple weeks. I don't really know much about racing to know what the teams need to do to improve. But Jesus Christ, can we please? do something about this Red Bull dominance because back-to-back weeks, Max Verstappen getting pole position in the qualies, leading the race most of the time, and then coming first. I mean, oh yeah, and my man Charles got fastest lap this time around, so not a perfect clean sweep for Max in this race, but yeah, that was good from Charles. Um, I guess he got DRS on some lapped cars, but yeah, we really need to end the dominance at some point. I can't, it's like my second race. My second, almost my third. I mean, if you count the partial race I watched in Vegas last year, Max won that one too. So it's like, can we, can something happen? Like, can we, can somebody like, I mean, I don't mean to like run him off the road, but like, can we get some, you know, business in there to like keep him from winning and all these races? Like, it's like in the pre-race show, there's so much excitement for what could happen. And then the moment what's expected to happen happens you kind of just sink back in your seat and you're just like, damn. I mean, it must be good for the Verstappen fans, you know. I just would like to see some competition for first place. But, yeah, I mean, besides that, F1 is really fun to watch when you know about a lot of the drivers and you're you're watching them kind of fight for these different positions. And especially, like, it was cool to see, I think, five of the teams were in the top six. So that was pretty cool. But, yeah, hopefully at Australia something different happens, uh, and I might have to jump on F123 and, and smash for Stappen a couple times with some low difficulty just to make myself feel better. But, yeah, till next race or next video.